My name is Chad Hodges. I'm a independent mortgage broker for a company called AmeriFund Home Loans. I think I know most of you already, either through Bayside, Bayside College, through just being a spiritual mentor in my life or one way or another. But if I don't know you, I look forward to meeting you. <laughs> Going to keep things pretty simple today. Um, just kind of what's the difference between an FHA loan, a conventional loan, why you should know the difference and maybe why it might benefit you to go one way or another with a borrower. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Banks and traditional lenders, why are they good? Well, they're needed. Everybody needs to borrow money, whether it's for a car, for a house, for a personal loan. So you have to have banks and traditional lenders. The downside is, is they all have something called overlays. What is an overlay? When it comes to mortgages, FHA may say, hey, you can get a loan if you have a 500 credit score. Banks and traditional lenders have something called overlays. It's a form of extra protection, protection basically. They'll step in and say, yeah, the FHA says you can get a loan with a 500 credit score, but not with us. That's where independent mortgage brokers come in. We can shop around, maybe find a lender that will take a 500 credit score. Mm -hmm. Necessarily doesn't happen all the time, but you have a better chance of then just going right to a bank. That's my job. Kind of just explain it. <laughs> All right, so FHA loans, here's some of the myths behind them. People think that you have to have a minimum or a maximum income to qualify. That's not true. Maximum income limits are for USDA loans. I'm not getting into those loans throughout this. Um, very rarely will you actually close a loan with a USDA loan. Um, they're just not as common as people would like them to be. Um, most common FHA conventional, that's why we're going there. Um, any buyer can qualify for an FHA loan, not just first time home buyers. Huge myth. Everybody thinks FHA, first time home buyer. Not true. You just have to qualify. Um, you can purchase other properties if you have an FHA loan. They just can't be a primary residence with an FHA loan. What I mean by that is if you already have an FHA loan, you can't go out and then say, okay, I'm going to buy this primary residence with an FHA loan as well. You can, but obviously the other property is no longer going to be a primary residence. That would then have to become an investment property. If you have that with an FHA loan, you have to own that property for at least a year before you can convert it. Same thing with conventional loans though. You can't just say, hey, this is my primary residence so I can get a better interest rate and then just as soon as you buy it, go, no, nope, no, nope, I'm renting it out. No, you have to own that property for at least a year. Mm -hmm. So how do you do this? Okay, I own this FHA home over here. I'm going to go out and buy an investment property. You use a conventional loan. Okay, I'm going to go out and buy a primary residence. You can then use an FHA loan with the understanding that the other property is no longer going to be your primary residence. Okay. Okay, moving on. Like I said, credit scores above 500 could qualify. Between 500 and 580, if you have a FHA loan, you will be required to put 10% down. That's where the problem lies. People use an FHA loan to put minimal money down. 3.5% is what most people are used to. You have to have at least a 580 credit score or better to get the 3.5% down with an FHA loan. That leads me, actually there's slides about all this, so I might as well keep moving. <laughs> here it is right here. That leads me to mortgage insurance. If you put 10% or better down on an FHA loan, you can get rid of your mortgage insurance after 11 years. Otherwise it will be there for the life of the loan. Understand that. People still think once they hit 80% equity with an FHA loan, you can get rid of mortgage insurance. That is not true. You must refinance your loan into a different loan product unless you put 10% down. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one more time. 10% down on an FHA loan if you ever mm -hmm. want to get rid of mortgage insurance. Okay. Any less than 10% down on an FHA loan will always have mortgage insurance. 
Like we talked about, FHA loans are for primary residents only. The reason for this, they don't want investors coming in and taking advantage of all the government's money, low down payments, and then first time home buyers, people that maybe can't qualify for conventional loans, they sucked up all the government's money and now it's not there for people that actually need it. Mm -hmm. um, they can be used for multi-unit properties as long as you are owner occupied. You can buy a four unit property, use it as an investment property if you live in one for a year. Hint, hint. So if it's a multi multi unit, you have to live there first for a year in one half in order to rent the other half. So you can't just move in, live there, and then rent the other half. Yep. You have to wait a full year first before you rent it out. Yep. Now, there's no so set guideline that tells you how long you have to live there. Mm -hmm. There's no set in stone, but nothing bad has ever happened to anybody that has been there at least 12 months. So that's why I say that mm -hmm. a year. So the other the other half of the property will stay empty basically? No, you can rent it out. You can but you say you have to wait a year. Oh no, you have to wait a year before you, you can use it as an investment property. Oh okay. As long okay. as it's owner occupied, okay. you still have to live there. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, that same applies for conventional loans as well. If okay. you are going to buy a primary residence and it's going to be a multi-unit property, okay. um, you can do that and rent out the other two or three or however many okay. units there are, as long as you live in one of them. Okay. Um, what's good about that is investment properties, even with conventional loans, have higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. There's more risk. If you buy a primary residence, and you're living in it, you get obviously a better interest rate. Mm -hmm. When you move out, um, there's nothing that says, okay, your interest rate is going to go up because you now that property is now an investment property. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the interest rate will stay lower on that property. You just are now, you know, like that is your investment property. You have now moved on to a different primary residence. Okay. So yeah. um, that's what's great about that. Now, just make sure... Um, this applies for FHA and conventional loans. When you're dealing with condos, so much easier if you have a condo that's already FHA approved. It doesn't matter if it's conventional or an FHA loan, mm -hmm. just for insurance purposes. If it's not FHA approved, then it's always better if it can, if you know that it's available to get put on the spot approval list. Um, if you want to find out, I put the HUD.gov website up there. I mean, Pretty easy to know HUD.gov. Mm -hmm. um, it's good for loan limits. It's good for knowing if your condo's on the condo list or not. Um, loan limits are good to know as well. I'll get into that here in just a minute. Why are loan limits good to know? Well, if you're in an area where you know you are limited on cash buyers, um, you're especially this market that we're looking at now. Cash buyers are starting to dry up. You guys know that. More people are needing loans. Even more people are able to qualify for an FHA loan than they are a conventional loan. It just expands your buyers. Don't price yourself out of a loan. These are the loan limits for how many units. Mm -hmm. If you know, more than likely, this home is going to be sold with an FHA loan, know what the loan limits are before you price a home. Concessions. We are getting into that time now where... Sellers are starting to throw some concessions at buyers. These are FHA maximum concessions. They cannot be used for down payment, only for loan costs, prepays, closing costs, mm -hmm. anything to do with the loan mm -hmm. except for down payment. Down payments, you can use grants, you can use gifts, you can use government loan programs, ship loans, things along that lines. You cannot use concessions for down payments. You can see the little asterisk at the bottom. Nope, you as the real estate agent cannot give the gift for a down payment. Pros and cons of the FHA loan. Small down payments, lower credit scores qualify, more money for the home. What do I mean by that? I'll talk about debt to income here in a little bit. I'm sure you guys already know what debt to income is. Mm -hmm. FHA is nice. The debt to income will allow me to go, I've seen it go as high as 60% before, but I, for the purposes of this, I put, I think 57% a little bit later in a slide. Mm -hmm. 
if your debts versus your income are allowed to go up to 57% with an FHA loan, you can afford more home. You can buy a more expensive home. You can qualify for more of a monthly payment. Um, good for you as the agent, good for the buyer, good for me as the lender. We all get paid off loan size. We all get paid off home, home sale price. That's good for us. <laughs> all right, so now the counterpart, conventional loans. 620 minimum credit score for Fannie and Freddie. Fannie and Freddie are the agencies that buy conventional loans from banks, lenders, <laughs> mortgage companies. Yes, it's government money. FHA loan is also government money. What does this do? Fannie and Freddie come in and they buy up the loans from the bank so they can then give more loans to people. Pretty simple. Um, the difference is, is, again, you then have overlays put in play. You then have banks. Basically, their feelings are put in play. Do they feel like this is going to be good enough? Well, that's where I come in. So who cares about feelings? Let's, let's shop around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Conventional loans, everybody talks about FHAs having low down payments. With a conventional loan, you can go as low as 3% for your down payment. Again, that's where overlays come in. Most of the time, you're not going to find a bank that's going to accept a 3% down payment on a conventional loan. If you do, good luck getting a decent interest rate. You're going to pay a premium. Yeah. So know that, understand that. The more you put down on a home, the better interest rate you're going to get. And it's people think it's just credit scores. It's not just credit scores. Talk about that in a couple minutes as well. Mortgage insurance will also be required with a conventional loan unless you put 20% down or more. Difference, mortgage insurance with a conventional loan will be cheaper. Mortgage insurance with a conventional loan will also be determined on how much you put down. If you put 5% down, you will pay more in mortgage insurance monthly than if you put 15% down. If you talk to a mortgage lender, a bank, a mortgage broker that tells you, oh, you put 10% down, you won't have mortgage insurance. It's a lie. You still will. It's built in to the interest rate, to the closing costs. It's built in somewhere. Mm -hmm. You will still pay a premium. I promise. Mortgage insurance with a conventional loan will fall off with equity. What do I mean by that? Once you pay your loan down enough that you've reached that 20% equity mark, the mortgage company will drop off the mortgage insurance. If you feel that your home has reached that equity mark, that it has increased in value enough, you can call your mortgage company and request a appraisal to be done to have it removed. Um, some of them require a waiting period, a year, two years, three years. Yeah. Talk to them about that to find out what it might be. Um, it's different with everyone. Here's the county loan limits. Anything above these limits will be pushed into what they call a jumbo loan. Um, still a lot of loan products out there for that. It's just not what they would consider a qualified mortgage at that point. It doesn't then fall in conventional limits. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot more people will qualify for a conventional loan than will qualify for a jumbo loan. You can put 3%, 5%, 7% down on a conventional loan. You cannot do that on a jumbo loan. Most of them have a 10% minimum. When you are talking about a $730,000 loan, 10% is a lot of money to put down. That may price a lot of people out of a loan. Keep that in mind. Pros and cons. I'm not going to read through them all. They are on your screen. I'll leave it here for a minute. Um, the stricter guidelines. Obviously, that, I mean, that's an obvious point, but you will have overlays in play with FHA and conventional loan products. Um, it's just FHA, the government will step in sometimes and say, no, 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 no. you, you got to loosen those restrictions up a little bit. We're here to help borrowers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where a lot of times the FHA will come into play where the conventional loan will slip away from you. And just to verify, no early ending MI is mortgage insurance and DTI is uh, debt to income. I'm sorry? 
no early ending mortgage insurance mm -hmm. and strict debt to income ratio requirements, I'm guessing, with DTI. Oh, with yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. I just wanted to make sure I was on the same track. Yeah. Hey. All right. And uh, concessions on conventional loans. The limits do depend on how much your borrowers put down. Most of the time, your borrowers are going to be maxed out at 3%. There's still a lot of loans out there that people are not putting 20% or more on. So, I mean, keep that in mind. If you're looking at, hey, we know this is going to need a concession, then maybe talk to your borrowers about how much they have to put down. Yeah. Again, keep in mind, gifts cannot come from you. All right, so we talked about the debt to incomes a little bit. FHA will allow me to go up to, like I said, I've seen higher than 57. I've also seen higher than 43 with conventional. We have something that we call desktop underwriters. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac both have them. When I write a loan, when any broker, any lender, anybody writes a loan, they're going to run it through a underwriter program. This is not the final say on a loan. This gives me a preliminary yes or no, this file looks good. Mm -hmm. The debt to income depends on the desktop underwriter. I can set something up. Somebody can have an 800 credit score. And just because there's something in that credit history that that desktop underwriter, that program does not like, it can tell me this file is not good to go. Hmm. It doesn't matter. At that point, I have to figure out what's wrong with it. It could just be, oh, this person missed a payment a year ago. The credit card company just failed to, they, they screwed something up. That borrower has to then call the credit card company, get it fixed. That being said, these debt to incomes are not the final say. What is the final say is the underwriters. I've seen files go through higher. I've seen files go through lower and still get denied. It's almost impossible for a loan officer to know what's going to get denied, what's not going to get denied if somebody doesn't fill out an application. Mm -hmm. That's where the mortgage officer, whether it's a direct lender, a bank, the traditional lender, a mortgage broker, we need you guys as the real estate agents to tell people, fill out an application. Don't just talk to a lender. You actually have to fill out the application so it can be ran through these programs. Things can be verified before they start the process because somebody can talk to a mortgage broker and, oh yeah, I make $500,000 a year. That's great. If it can't be verified, documented, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of loan programs out there that are built for people. Oh, I just started a business two years ago or I just started last year, COVID, I was off work. That's why mortgage brokers are big right now, rather than banks, because a lot of a lot of companies out there that are maybe not direct lending, talking to the buyers themselves, they talk to the mortgage brokers. They're coming up with new programs weekly, almost daily right now, because they're not selling as many loans. So that's, again, it's so big to have your people fill out an application just for the simple fact that even me as a broker, like they're coming out with new programs daily. I can't keep up on, oh, now we're allowing this. Now we're allowing that. They're removing the overlays. It's impossible because they're not making as much money. They're starting to loosen restrictions and take off overlays. And it's impossible to keep up with it. That's why we need applications filled out so we can run the underwriting programs and know, is this file gonna make it through? Mm -hmm. That's where we need to work together. So again, loan limits are big for you guys. Um, I mean, I know it's our job as lenders to direct borrowers which loan product is best for them, but it's always better if you can have two people working together to help guide people. If you know somebody is, hey, they're only gonna be in this house for a short time, then they're gonna rent it out, they're moving on to something else, Maybe you want to put a bug in their ear. Hey, I know you guys want to put 20% down, but you're probably going to be better off saving that money for your next investment property or for your next house you purchase and putting a little bit of money down. 
I'm going to tell them that. But if there's two people telling them that, it's going to work better. Repeat customers. Don't price yourself out of loans. Um, and let's all work together. Beautiful. I can you put out two years of same type of employment? Um, I know I've seen, well, I heard different cases that it's like it could be up to six months. Uh, harder, obviously, but is it possible? It's possible. Is it really? I haven't seen six months. But yeah. It's possible in the sense that they will be paying crazy more. premiums. Okay. Like when I say crazy premiums, like double interest okay. rates. I guess I have seen it work though. If Bank somebody statement comes long. straight out of college, mm -hmm. and as a nurse, for instance, college is considered work experience. Dollars, right. Steps into the yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Like I have right now, I have a borrower that was a he was going to college for physical therapy. He was working part time as a physical therapist, only working a couple of days a month. Uh, college counts as work experience. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if you have college experience, that counts as work experience. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, when I say two years of the same type of employment, that has really loosened up with COVID restrictions because so many people switched. I, I use the term industry loosely because car sales and furniture sales is still sales, correct? So when somebody fills out an application, you weren't a car salesman and a furniture salesman, you were a salesman. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind if you have okay. somebody fill out applications. Generalizations. Be broad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, manual underwriting. I know I missed a bunch. Sorry about that. Manual underwriting, 99% of the time, is for um, maybe non-QM loan products. Um, FHA and conventional loan products, they like to see you get approval through desktop underwriting before they say, yes, we'll take this loan. Um, what I was talking about today is basically just FHA, conventional. What's the difference and why, why does it care? Why do you care? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, with something that's going to be manually underwritten, most of the time they're not going to qualify for just a, a standard FHA or conventional. It's going to be non-QM for one reason or another. So that's why I want manual underwriting. Yeah. I have seen FHA and conventional go manual, but they already had an approval through desktop underwriting and they were already in, they were already submitted to the loan company before that. So it was like, okay, we, we've already underwritten this file now. Like there was something wrong. Right. Now we're going to take a deeper look kind of a thing. It wasn't submitted knowing it was going through manual, manual underwriting. Right. Mm -hmm. so, all right. What about hometown heroes program? Hometown heroes programs. Any kind of ship loan, hometown heroes programs, anything like that. Read into them. A lot of them create a second lien on your property where in a market like today's, you have to be careful with it because if you buy a house with a six and a half percent interest rate, you know you're going to refinance that home. If you have that second lien, that loan, that ship lien on your property, mm -hmm. you can't refinance that home without <laughs> paying that off. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. If you owe that company 50 grand, your home's only worth 400,000 and you owe 375, you're not refinancing, right? So you're stuck with that six and a half percent interest for the next thirty or however long until you get enough equity to pay that. Yeah, that which, loan which isn't horrible to anybody except for those young people that have grown up with these amazing interest rates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I came out of high school; it was super high. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's the only danger with some of these hometown hero ship home yeah. programs, stuff like that is. People are going into these homes knowing that they're going to refinance, and then they find out they can't. I yeah, didn't even I, think about that with hometown heroes. I didn't realize there yeah. was a second mortgage in place. Yeah, like basically. Like the ship lead. program. The ship program sure. is a thirty-year okay. forgivable lead. Right. But you have to if you live there. Yeah. If you refinance it, it has to be paid off. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure hometown heroes is the same way. Yeah. And that's why you yeah. actually find a lot of um, larger mortgage companies, stuff like that, just say, no, nah, if it's not an actual grant, like a government grant program, we just don't want to deal with it. So. Right. Well, I've seen that a lot, too, with the window and door programs they'll do and things like that. Same, yeah. same idea. I don't know if that's ship or not. Yeah. I'll, right now, actually, over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of actual government grant programs where it's actually free government money. I applied for one. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the um, high, high wind risk zone. 
So I just applied for one because uh, if, and this is for everybody, I mean, if uh, you start replacing windows, I put in basically one third, they'll pay two thirds. Yeah. Pick me all day long. Absolutely. Um, but it's up to 10 grand. So it's still, it's co covers 15,000 windows, which doesn't go real far. I get an older home. It's like, yeah, game yeah. up. Yeah. I need to do that too, though. It doesn't do anything with your insurance. Not a thing. It, oh, it improves your insurance. Oh, I gotta do that. <laughs> and, and they give you a free <laughs> inspection and everything to make sure. See you still have that link? Hmm? You still have that link? Mm -hmm. Will you send it to me? Sure. And I had a client ask, and she has a conventional loan for 300000 Home price was two seventy. Um, She wanted to put like new floors, countertops. Um, you know, just upgrade the home a bit. Mm -hmm. um, she was asking if she could use more of her loan to funnel money towards that and pay it off with the home. Unless I was thinking like an FIJ 203. 203K. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 203K, 203H. Okay. I think, I think <laughs> H is the Hurricane. Hurricane, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it wouldn't be an H unless it was damaged. Yeah, it's case the repair okay. the level. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the problem with the uh, 203K, of course, is all licensed contractors. They can't put their hands on it. There's they have to get approved through their programs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's it's the whole the whole shebang. Yeah, you're done. Not that it's a bad there. thing. Yeah, not that it's a bad thing. It fits certain people. If they buy a home, know it needs a kitchen as they're getting into it, okay, it works. Mm -hmm. um, but I just trying to make sure I'm yeah. on the right track. You, yeah, you, you also have to, have, time, yes. you have to, what's the appraisal that you can make with O2? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so I don't remember the name of it. Um, I didn't read something that there's this type of program, and I don't remember the name. I'll probably have to follow up if anything. Um, it's typically for first time home buyers that instead of having like a six or seven percent, mm -hmm. they can have like a three percent, and then after a year, it's four, after another year, it's five. Do you know the name? Yeah, that's called a buy down. Okay, yeah, I there's, there's a lot of different. No? I can do them. Um, is that a buy down or an arm? No, that would be a buy down. Okay, She's okay. like a, a two one buy down okay. Okay. where the seller would buy the interest rate down yeah. for the first year. Mm -hmm. And then after a year, it would jump up a little bit. Yeah, and then exactly. after that year, they, they yeah. up to like one. Each yeah. year. So basically all that all that is, is your seller agreeing to pay X amount to make the payments cheaper for the first couple of years. Is okay. basically all it is. Okay. It's a good sales plan. It, it is. Um, but I find that most borrowers are, hey, instead of like most borrowers are more enticed by let me keep my money. Right. Like instead of just lowering my payment for a short time, why don't you throw in on closing costs or you yeah. buy down the, the interest rate for the life of the loan a little right. bit instead of just for the first I year or two? That. I like the life of the loan. Yeah. Otherwise, they gotta qualify for the whole thing. Either. Yes, you still have to qualify yeah. for the entire payment. It's not like, oh, because they bought this down, it's no, easy no, no, to yeah. qualify. But for I mean, like the sales pitch, like if you have a person that says, Oh man, the interest rates are so high, that you know, is there any options? Like, yeah, it so, could be, it's just it, in my opinion, it's better that if the seller is going to contribute money like that, do it for the life of the loan. Buy a couple of points to knock down the interest rate for the whole life well, of the loan. Yeah, that's the well, it's the seller. That, that's in both cases we're talking about. It's the seller that's contributing mm -hmm. to the buy down. Okay. Yeah, not the buyer. You're asking the seller instead of uh, mm -hmm. instead of maybe reducing the price, or you talk them into a price reduction first so they mm -hmm. feel warm and fuzzy about it and they agree. And then come back to them and say, hey, we want to do a rate buy down instead. We think it'll appraise. Do you mind doing this for us? Okay. Yeah, it's all timing approach. Yeah. There's we're entering a season right now where we're gonna have to communicate a lot more as lenders and agents. Mm -hmm. Um, just because of the simple fact, like, hey, I talked to Joey last week. He just referred me a guy that Joey's been working with this guy for a few years and he wants to buy the house. He's his brother owns that he's living in. I get on the phone with the guy. All right, how much money do you have for closing costs, down payment, all that stuff? Nothing. In fact, I want to buy the house for more than what I owe so I can afford to transfer over utilities into my name. Oh. You don't even have enough money to transfer utilities? Wow. This is going to be tough. But it could be doable if we can talk to his brother, who is the owner of the house, and say, hey, your brother's going to buy this house, but understand you're going to have to contribute for 
And with that question, how much is he allowed to contribute towards the uh, buyer for the yeah. percent? It's huge. It is huge. Six percent is max concessions, and it cannot go to down payment. So in this case, I'm going to have to find an FAJ down payment assistance program. Mm -hmm. He's going to pay a higher interest rate. He's going to pay a premium, but he'll have to put zero down payment. His brother will pay for all the closing costs. Does the this house. program only work for some buyers or no? No, there's like it's you can. It's basically on the seller. You have to talk a seller into doing concessions, like hey. We're going to buy your house for 200000 but you're giving us ten grand back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of sellers are actually happy if they see their number on the sales price line, so this is the, even though they're giving uh, them a tool of track. So I don't know if you're looking at this or. Oh, I was done with this. Okay. Um, so I have a person that wants to, would like to sell. They're in Altiara. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to buy like land. So she's. They're kind of stopping because of the whole percentage thing, because right now they're only at 225. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was kind of like getting into, okay, how will that work? Because she is a seller. She was selling it. Does she really care about that rate, though? The 6%? Well, 6%? <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people, honestly, as long as they can make that payment, a lot of people look at the payment more than yeah. anything. Uh, as long as they can make that payment and move from here where they're happy mm -hmm. to here where they feel they'll be happier, yeah, they'll do it. That's everybody that's like you have to when you talk to people, you have to let them understand if you're buying a home with a mortgage right now, you're going to refinance. Mm -hmm. People are scared of the interest. Yeah, rate. she already they already took the money. They just refi. Yeah. No, they just yeah. did. They did something. She said that they took money out of the house already. And I'm like, what did you do? Oh, they, they might have done it. Right mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I haven't got too far because we're at a birthday party. So I didn't want to make it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right, sit down with me at the kids' table. Like, <laughs> 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 like, do you have like extra grand? Are they going to fill? Or? No, I don't really get it. Like, like I said, I'm like, I don't want to go to So do you do construction loans? Yeah, that was going to be my next question. We go into if the they buy like a land. Or like two months ago, no. Lando. No kidding. Lando. Again, two months ago, no. Now, yes. Okay. I seen um one of my lenders two weeks ago said something about land loans. I haven't looked into them. Just yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, about that too. What's a rate on a land loan? What can I buy on a piece of property? Yeah, somebody knows. Yeah, we know married a home, not the rate. That's absolutely what that's I say it. all the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And that's what you need to tell people right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have to understand that interest rates are, they're always going to yeah. do this. So yeah, she was asking if I have an answer to it. And I'm like, probably not. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> In the next 15 years again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it ever does. Yeah. That was a crazy rate. I remember people were like, oh, we're going to wait for home prices to go down. Now it's, oh, we're going to wait for. This and then we're gonna wait for this yeah, and then we're gonna wait for this. Pay for a fuel, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you're still paying hundred percent, thousand dollars in rent and hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, people don't understand that's hundred percent interest to me. Mm -hmm. Pay off someone else. There are interest. times where some people should be a renter for a while, mm -hmm. get their house in order yeah. so they can get a better loan. That makes sense. But um, yeah, the sooner you get in the home ownership game. The sooner, yeah. typically, you're you're making money and building your nest egg. Yeah, and it's yours. Paint it whatever color you want. Do what you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm so excited <laughs> for. Yeah, it's fun. Heck yeah. Oh, Saving money in a year. Um, all of our have you been looking at the short sale game at all? Have I? Ooh. Yeah, because you know that's uh, most likely coming up again. It's coming up again. But no, I haven't really been looking into it. Um, Our whole team like, just did the uh, yeah, was training. training. <laughs> yeah, that's all I see it up there. Like, we all got certified. Oh, um, we're not certified yet. Right, you got to pay hundred something. Yeah. But we got the documentation. That, yes. That came yesterday. Yep, I did see. Um, Liz Pendis. One of my. Um, <laughs> Liz Pendis. Figure out how to spell it. That's <laughs> <laughs> me. Or him, not an S. Yeah. I tried for Pendus. <laughs> oh, well. You know, my mom might have been an English teacher, didn't make me a world champion speller. Oh, I didn't actually talk about any of this. If you guys don't know, um, foreclosures, short sales, anything that started the foreclosure process, whether you just started it, short sale, anything like that, mm -hmm. um, conventional loan, you are looking seven years 
if that's on your credit for any kind of a foreclosure. Yeah. Um, FHA loan, you are looking three years. Um, bankruptcies. Mm -hmm. For conventional loans, you are looking four years. And with FHA, you are looking two years. Is that all? Wow. wow. I thought short sale was two years. Short sale might be um, two years, but I know if it exited that short sale proceeding and if anything said the word foreclosure on it, mm -hmm. you have to wait the full full set. Wow. Like even yeah. if like it it was like bordering um like hey this is a short sale but we're starting the foreclosure proceedings if they started it no nope. so bankruptcy is mm -hmm. better than foreclosure yes okay wow. oh that's your bankruptcy included or right bankruptcy usually is called yeah right it's always the except yep yeah um, that's how you're saying so i had done a couple of games but with nobody being here I'm here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but Leo, this is let's, here. Let's play. Sally is 34 years old, married, wants to buy a permanent residence. She has credit scores. Well, I guarantee you the other guys will go back and watch this. Uh -huh. Has no credit card debt and is paying our student loan. She can put three and a half percent down. What kind of loan will she likely qualify for? The credit score is the issue. Yeah. It's probably going to be FHA. Here you go. The 619. Mm -hmm. 580 going. What, what's the what's 580 the is well technically 500 is the minimum for FHA. That's amazing. You'll never find a lender that'll let you know. Yeah. That's one of the things I covered first is same thing with conventional loans. Conventional people think five percent down is the minimum, three percent is. Yeah. But your interest rate's gonna be sky high, and most lenders won't let you do a conventional loan with only three percent down. So, yeah. Swan. Mm -hmm. Alan's 22 years old, wants to buy his first home. Cool. His credit score is 742. He has normal credit card debt. He can put 5% down and all the are in and out after living there for a year. What kind of loan will you like to qualify for? First of all, you don't tell anybody you plan on renting it out in a year. Um, <laughs> okay. You want to know that in the moment. I would say he'll follow up yeah, sure. by any of them. Can't he yeah. go FHA as well? I would say FHA not? if he's going to rent it out after a year. The correct answer is C. Both products should definitely be priced out. The reason I say that, two weeks ago, I had a borrower, 724 credit score. FHA loan actually priced out better than the conventional loan by $200 a month. Wow. Wow. And then something. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. Even with MI. Even though he had a decent credit score, he was putting 5% down. The FHA priced out better. He put less down and spent less money every yeah. month. I remember you telling me that at one point. Okay. Yeah. It's actually, he's closing next month on the 13th. My one of like a distant relative up in Michigan. Nice. Nice. So as a uh, as an agent though. We're not allowed to contribute to anybody's down payments. That stinks. No down payments. You can contribute to any loan cost, not down payment. Okay. That's the clarity I needed right there. Yep. I was going to go, wait a minute. I believe I'm going to tell me I haven't done anything illegal. Oh, okay. What's the. Yeah. Loan costs whatsoever. That's the way they Closing costs, prepaid. It reserves anything what can like they that. include in their prepaids? Let's go there. He's got minimal credit card debt, but he has some. Can he put that as a prepaid? Thinking outside the box, as I often do. <laughs> yes, you can. But um, you have to remember that you only have 6% total concessions that can be used. Mm -hmm. So if you start putting fifteen dollars or $20,000 worth of credit card debt, as a something that has to be paid off at closing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's going to eat up concessions real quick, especially if you're talking about somebody that needs that money to pay off things off to qualify and also doesn't have money because where are they going right. to then pay for closing costs? So what's the average that you're seeing uh, percentage-wise that people are having to pay uh, for their closing costs? Um, I think Joey's got it pretty well averaged right. I'm seeing normally between... I'll go on the high side, three and a half to six percent, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, so it can roughly eat up that whole amount. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
That's what I think everybody needs to hear. Yes. So yeah, it eats up that amount real quickly. But <laughs> have something else in your back pocket because if it doesn't, that money's going to go out the window. Mm -hmm. uh, you may as well figure out a way to use it for your buyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when they when they send you over a closing statement, if uh, it only shows like you've agreed to six percent, it only shows five percent. They can use run the math yourself because the closing agent doesn't care. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can easily go, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. How come we don't have, well, they didn't use it. We don't need that much. Okay, call them up. See what else you can pay off. You know, help them pay out. Pay off that closing is important. Yeah, yeah. it is. If, if it's going to not only save your borrower's money, it's going to lower their debt to income. Because if I can mark something to be paid off at closing, yeah. lowers their debt to income, gives them a better opportunity to qualify for it. And they're going to love you. You will be their agent for life. Mm -hmm. so if you're not shame on them. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm just actually going to pour some more coffee. Oh, yeah. Any other any other fun ones up here? Do I think I have one more? Cool. Your client talks about not wanting mortgage insurance, or MI in our industry. In which scenario would the client not have to pay MI? FHA loan with 10% down. Conventional loan with less than 20% down. Conventional loan with 20% or more down. FHA loan with 3.5% down. <laughs> Depends on the mood <laughs> of the lender. Feels that way sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only one I know of without MI is, uh, oh, wait a minute, a 10%. Nope, not FHA. It's got to be B. The correct answer is 20% down or more. Or more. Oh, I didn't read the or more. Ah, yeah. yeah that part. <laughs> you can write it. I love that with less than 20% down, more than 20% down. Yeah, yeah you were here at the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, of course. <laughs> If you um, didn't, because I know you know that FHA now has mortgage insurance for the light on the loan. Right. Unless you put 10% down mm -hmm. 11 years. Um, so I didn't know if you had, if you were here for that. Part. No, I didn't hear. I didn't um, put 11 there. Yeah. The, um, like I said, you can get an FHA loan as low as a 500 credit score. 500 to 579, you have to put 10% down. You can't do 3.5%. Yeah. So that kind of knocks out anybody that was going to get an FHA loan. That's right. the good part of an FHA loan is three and a half percent. 